Surprise, kids. Guess what? We're going to have Mr. Post help you learn how to do a craft today, too. Isn't that exciting? Um, <laughs> boo boo butt? Sure. Let's do boo boo butt. <laughs> how do we make boo boo butt, Mr. Post? Um, help. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Why don't you get behind the camera and I'll show the kids how to make boo boo butt from our story. The Book with No Pictures by B.J. Novak. That's a good idea because I almost failed art when I was in high school. All right. Let me get behind. The, you get behind the camera. Okay, everybody. So now I'm back here and I'm going to show you guys how we can make Boo Boo Butt, who is the hippo, featured in our book, The Book with No Pictures. And he's a really cute kind of hippo that we can make um, just out of things that you should have laying around at home. You will need some paper plates. Just the cheap kinds are fine um, to make this project with. Then you're going to need a pair of scissors, a pencil, a black Sharpie marker, or just even a regular black marker is fine. You're going to need some of these gigantic googly eyes, but not everybody has like their own little craft store in their basement like I do. So you can also just take some large coins. If you're Canadian, you can use the loonie, and if you're American, you can use the quarter or even the half dollar. And you can trace that out with your pencil and then color in a little black center for your eyes if you'd like. Um, you're going to need some paint. I have pink and I have gray paint, but again, not everybody has multi multiple colors of paint in their basement. So you can also use crayons. You can use a red and a green and a gray crayon if you have that. Um, you're going to need some scrap paper that we're going to make for the ears. You're going to need some scrap white paper or computer paper so that we can make the nostrils on your hippo. And I use giant marshmallows for my teeth, but if you don't have giant marshmallows at home, you can also cut out teeth from your um, extra white paper. So you're also going to need glue. You can also use a hot glue gun, which we have over here. And then I also found that using toothpicks kind of helped keep the mouth propped open while I was waiting for the teeth to dry. So I'll give you guys a minute or two to gather all that stuff up and we can start our craft. What you're going to need to get started are your paper plates. And I strongly recommend that you start painting your pink plate first. If you um, just squirt some pink paint onto the paper and then if you've got a regular size brush that will work, but I like the foam bristle brushes. I think that they work a little bit easier and faster, especially for little fingers. You can also use your fingers to paint if you like to get really messy, but not everybody does. So you just want to smear this pink paint all over your paper. If you're going to use paint, I strongly recommend that you put something underneath it to protect your surface, unless your table is like mine and resists all kinds of markers, paints, and other kinds of torments and tortures that I put it through. Um, you want to get the entire surface painted. You don't need a lot of paint because these are thin paper plates. They will get soggy fast and it takes forever for them to dry. So a little bit of paint goes a long ways here. And you just kind of want to get it all over. If you're coloring it, you can just color as hard, as dark as you like all the way around. Um, and you want to make sure you get into all the little crevices here. I'm going to need just a little bit more paint. Oh, there we go. And we'll finish off the top here. And get around the edges really, really good. Because this is going to be the inside of your hippopotamus's mouth. There we go. And then we're going to set the pink one off to make sure it dries good for a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and do our gray hippo center now. And you're going to want to take your gray paint and you want to do the same thing you did with the pink. And I'll use this other brush to demonstrate how that works in comparison to that brush now. And here you just want to, again, cover the entire paint plate with gray paint. And, or if you're using your crayons, you can also use markers if you've got gray and pink markers at home. 
Um, the crayons will make a more duller or less vibrant looking hippopotamus, but that's okay too because some hippos aren't very vibrant. If you go to um, some zoo websites, they will show you some really cute videos of their hippos, but I don't think any of them have the name Boo Boo Butt. I think that is just in our book here. And oops, and we're going to need a little bit more gray paint here. If you're looking to, oh, I got too much there. If you're looking to purchase paint, um, several of your craft stores will have it. Um, I highly recommend that for parents of preschoolers that you only purchase water soluble paints so that it will come out of their clothing, hair, fingernails, and your furniture with ease. Um, there we go. And now we have one completely gray paint. Okay, and we're gonna let that one dry. Now you're gonna to wanna to take your pink plate again, and you're going to want to fold it in half. And on the top half of it, you're also going to want to paint it gray, or color it gray, whatever you're doing with your crayons or markers, so that you form the nose of your hippopotamus. And we'll just paint this over like so. And you want to make sure that you get the fold of the plate also, but you don't have to do the bottom side of it, just the top side. And we'll finish this up here now. If you got a little bit of pink showing through on the top, that's okay too. Most hippopotamuses have um, pigment coloration variations on their skin. It would look a little bit more realistic that way. Okay, and now this is where your toothpicks are going to come in because since your pink might not be completely dry yet, we don't want it to dry shut. And you're gonna to wanna to take a toothpick or two and just set that in there so that it stays upright and let it completely dry. So we're gonna let it dry for a few minutes and we'll be right back to make the rest of our hippopotamus. Oh God. Okay, so we're back and as you can see, our paint is just about dry. So while we let it finish here, um, the little bits that are still wet, we're gonna cut out a few things. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out our ears. Now I just use purple scrap paper. You can use whatever kind of scrap paper you have. I cut off about uh, two inches here and I'm gonna fold it in half like that. You can make your ears as big or as small as you like. And I just simply cut up and then I curve and then I came back down and curved again. This might be something that um, a parent or a caregiver could trace out on the paper and you kids can um, cut out. Or if you're not good with scissors or are not allowed to use scissors, this is gonna be an area that your parent or caregiver can help you do. And that would be your ears. Now, to make the, the little noses, I took a sheet of scrap paper and there again too, I folded it in half. And here I made a teardrop shape. You're gonna start at the bottom and just come to the top, we're gonna to curve like so. And then at the top, you wanna to curve back down to the bottom. So it kinda of looks like a flower petal. And then you have two of those for the noses. The teeth, I just took a long strip of paper. I folded that in half. And then I cut them out. You wanna make the bottom teeth shorter than the top teeth. So you wanna kinda of cut it at an uneven spot. And here again too, you just want to come up and cut off a rounded top, like so. And, um, and then for the bottom teeth, you want to do the same thing. Wanna just round off at the top. And there you are. And then we can cut the fold here. So you have two teeth. And so you can glue them to your mouth if you're not using marshmallows. Just fold up a little tab like I did on these. And you have your teeth. Now for the eyes, like I said, if you don't have googly eyes, and these can be hard to find sometimes, you can make your own. You just wanna take a large coin. I have a Canadian loonie, which is a $1 coin, and an American quarter. You can use whichever ones you like. Um, I'm gonna use the Canadian just because it's a little bit bigger. If you have a half dollar, that would work also. And I'm just gonna trace out two circles here. Like so. And then again, you can cut out your circles. 
If you have a circle hole punch, like I do, but I don't have it home, um, you can go ahead and use that instead also. It would be about a one inch hole punch. That would work great for this project. And then we'll do the other one. Googly eyes are fun because they shake and move around with the face of the hippo as you move it around, but these work too. And then we can just take our black marker and we can draw an eyeball in like so. And another eyeball. And like that. And so now you have eyes. So now let's assemble our hippo. Again, um, I recommend that we can use Elmer's glue or glue all. And you want to take your bottom gray part of your hippo and you want to take the underside of your pink mouth, the part you didn't paint, and you want to put glue all over the bottom side of it like that. And then lay it on your hippo mouth like this so that it covers nice and securely. And that is your hippo's mouth. As you can see, my paint's still a little wet there. So be careful. And then you can glue your eyes on. We'll take our homemade eyes. Oops. And we can glue them on like that. And another one like this. Hopefully your hippo isn't losing his vision like Mrs. Post and won't need bifocals. Although that would be a cute addition to your hippo if you wanted to give him glasses, just cut out some black construction paper and make him some eyeglasses. That would be really cute. And so now you can put your ears on your hippo. Just glue them underneath the main plate, like so. Glue them towards the top and push them down to secure. Now we're going to glue our noses on. You just want to run a strip of glue on here. You can use a glue stick too if you like. Um, I think my dog ate our glue stick. I can't seem to find it. And we have another nose here. And then we're going to give our little hippo some freckles. As you can see in our demonstration here, we put a bunch of random black dots on here. This is why you need to make sure that your paint is dry. Your marker won't stick as well to wet paint. You just want to randomly put some whisker freckles on your hippo. Just like that. There, and that is the front part of his face. Now we're going to add the teeth. I'll do the paper teeth on this one. On the marshmallow teeth that I did here, we used a hot glue gun to secure the marshmallows to it because we found, if you look carefully, that the, the all-purpose glue kept sliding the teeth off. So I use a hot glue gun because the marshmallows are so heavy. It's cute with the marshmallows, but it makes a heavier project. So for this one, we're going to use the teeth that we made. And so we're going to take our bottom teeth and wrap this up here like so. And we're going to glue these onto the bottom like this. And we're going to glue this one on to the bottom like this. Like that. And then on the top with our teeth also. Oops. Because the top teeth will be bigger than the bottom teeth. And like this one. And there you have a boo boo butt hippo. Perfect for your story about a book with no pictures. So I hope you enjoyed that craft today. I hope you had a very happy April Fool's Day. And we will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.